I'm Griff Robodanger and today we're going to be looking at some of the killers from slasher movies released between 1982 and 1983. As always, I'm only including slasher movies that I've personally seen and that I feel fit the conventional slasher movie template. Of course, if you feel like I missed something really important from this era, let me know down in the comments. And of course, I have to point out, there's going to be a lot of spoilers in here because we're going to be revealing the killers and their secret identities. And we're also going to be revealing other plot points of these movies. So if you haven't seen these movies, you've been warned. All right, Skeletron, go bring them up. Hospital Massacre. When Harold was a boy, he gave a Valentine card to a girl named Susan. She mocked this gesture, so he killed her friend. 19 years later, Harold is an intern at a hospital. When Susan shows up at the hospital, his obsession is reignited. He kills anyone who comes between him and the only thing he's always wanted, Susan's heart. Death screams. Neil is a high school coach who starts killing off teenagers who party and have sex because his mother was a prostitute and she had sex in front of him and it messed him up. I think that's what was happening at least. Humongous. It's loose. It's angry. And it's getting hungry. A seven-foot-tall mutant born with severe deformities. He lived with his mother on Dog Island until her death. He grew hungry and was forced to eat his mother's dogs until a shipwreck delivers a group of vacationers to his island and his appetite. The forest. What begins as a pleasure trip ends as a bloodbath. John's wife was abusing their children and cheating on him. So he killed her and ran off to the woods with his kids. Then the kids killed themselves, which drove John mad. Now he's a cannibal who hunts hikers passing through the woods for food. Honeymoon horror. Frank was enraged when he saw his wife having an affair. His wife and her lover knocked Frank out and set him on fire. Believed to be dead, he returns for vengeance terrorizing the honeymoon vacation spot his former wife operates. Friday, the 13th, part three, a new dimension in terror. Still on the loose, Jason Voorhees continues his Crystal Lake murder spree, this time targeting a group of friends at a lake house. He also finds a hockey mask. The dorm that dripped blood, where the only thing you'll learn is how to die. Craig is a college student who is secretly in love with his friend Joanne. When their group of friends stays at campus over Christmas break to clean out an old dormitory, Craig's obsession with Joanne grows, and he begins killing their friends, who he thinks are getting in the way of their true love. Unhinged, the nightmare has begun. When a car accident brings three young women to a rural mansion, they are introduced to Marion and her mother, Mrs. Penrose, who hates men so much she won't even let Marion's brother into the house. But Marion is revealed to secretly be Mrs. Penrose's other son, who peeps on the girls as they shower and eventually starts killing them. The Slumber Party Massacre. Close your eyes for a second and sleep forever. Russ Thorne was imprisoned in 1969 for killing five people. He escapes years later to stalk a group of girls at a slumber party, killing them one by one with a giant power drill. The house on Sorority Row. Eric is the son of a sorority house mother who keeps him hidden in the attic of the sorority house. After witnessing his mother's death in a prank gone wrong, Eric begins killing the sorority sisters responsible for his mother's death. Madman Mars was an evil man, a farmer who one night butchered his entire family. A vigilante group hanged him by a noose and axed him in the face for his crimes, but the next morning his body had vanished. Legend states that if you say his name above a whisper, he'll come for you. Curtains, the ultimate nightmare. Patty is an aspiring actress who is competing with five other women for a part in a prestigious movie. She begins murdering all of the other competing actresses to ensure that she wins the role. More 
sanctuary where nobody rests in peace. Paul developed a psychotic obsession with Christy, the daughter of his psychiatrist. When the doc tried to get Paul institutionalized, Paul killed him. Now, Paul works in a mortuary, embalming his victims so they can attend the ghoulish wedding he has planned for himself and Christy. Jesus, you don't have to go to Texas for a chainsaw massacre. When he was 10 years old, Dean Foley chopped his mother into pieces with an axe. 40 years later, he's the dean of a college and begins killing co-eds on his campus, taking various body parts and stitching them together to recreate his mother. Girls night out. A dead man came home. Katie's twin brother Dickie killed his girlfriend and was placed in a sanitarium. When he commits suicide, Katie takes on his personality and starts killing co-eds at his old university dressing in the school's bear mascot suit to stalk several young women participating in an all-night scavenger hunt. The final terror. Now comes the naked horror. A young girl was driven insane and placed in a mental institution where she gave birth to a baby named Edgar. He returned as an adult to get his mother released. Too psychotic to live in normal society, she lives deep in the woods, killing anyone who sets up camp in her domain. The brain, it's not human. And it's X. The monster was once a normal boy living with a family of gypsies in a mountain cave. When a wildfire ravages the forest, only the boy survived, with severe burns. Now he survives in the mountains by hunting anything he encounters, including humans. Sleep away, Cam. You won't be coming home. Angela Baker was born as Peter Baker. After surviving a horrible boating accident which claimed the life of Peter's father and twin sibling, Peter was raised by a mentally unstable aunt who forced Peter to become Angela, the daughter she always wanted. Years later at summer camp, Angela has a psychological breakdown and begins murdering her fellow campers and counselors. Alright, that'll about do it for this video, but I've got more of these coming up and I've got all kinds of crazy fun stuff I have planned, so if you want to see that stuff, you know, you might want to subscribe. And if you're already subscribed, you're awesome, and as always, later danger seekers.